The relighting workflow is actually really easy. In this shot, I've created a mesh across the whole frame, and I only really had it track over the character's face because I thought that was going to be important. The rest of these points, I believe, are just sitting there and interpolating. But the whole scene is one mesh. This is how it looks in the 3D tab. I'll go to Export 3D and create a C4D file. Here's the shot in Cinema 4D. And of course we need to actually add the light in here. To get the wand in there, I tracked a completely separate instance, just a different layer. And I had experimented with a few things, but I ended up really only using this last point on the top. But I did want to point out that this point is interpolating and following these two points, which tracked a little more easily. So to get this into Cinema 4D, I can take this point and press Create Transform, and then Export 3D, except I won't export the frames because I've already done that. I'll call it Light Point, and I'll open this up in Cinema 4D as well. It opens in a different scene file. There are no textures, that's okay. Let's go through and delete the stuff that we don't need. We don't need the mesh, and we don't need the background. And this null is where we would have had a planar hero transform, but we don't need that either. We just need this one single point. And I'll call this point light. Copy it. And move into my other scene and paste it. Let's put a sphere in here just so it's easier to see. And we can look through our main camera. So that's moving as it should. But the issue is, is it too close? Is it too far? Where is it relative to this mesh? Because as we had discussed in other tutorials, when you do a single point transform, it gets stuck on this line where Z equals zero. But what if it was supposed to be a lot closer in front of her face, not next to her face? This is actually pretty easy to solve. We can scale down this whole group, but we have to do it from the perspective of the camera. I'm gonna go into a two view side by side because this will be confusing otherwise. And I'm going to create a new null. This null has to be at the position of the camera. So the easiest way to do that, I think, is to zero it out when you parent it under the camera. And now see that null, that null is where the camera is. Now let's take it out and I'll just call this adjust scale and I'll take my entire point light scene and parent it under there. So I'll press T, which is going to scale things and let's just make sure that we're in object mode, not model mode, because that will destroy absolutely everything. And I want you to really pay attention to what's happening on the left side here and what's happening on the right side here. As I scale this down, see how it doesn't look like it changes at all on the right side? That's because everything is aligned in perspective with the camera. When, when you scale down from the position of the camera, you can see the frustrum here. It all stays aligned. Um, I can't explain it. It just does. It's perfect. It's great. So let's actually put a light in here. I'll take this light and parent it under my one points attachment and zero it out. And I'll make the scale one. I don't know if that really matters. And let's disable this sphere for now. So now let's pay a little bit more attention to this view and let's scrub along. You can see what's happening. We're getting some good relighting on the face. This would look better with shadows, by the way. So we can select this light, shadow. You should probably be using redshift and all the default settings in there, but I think this is nice to the people who have Cinema 4D light. I'll hit Control R. And you can see how much better that looks when the shadows are calculating. So if we want to adjust the distance of this light, we can do that again just by scaling here and saying, okay, this is probably too close. Now it's lighting the wrong side of her face. Or I can scale this way up. So maybe the easiest thing to do is just look at roughly where the wand is in here 
and scale it to about that distance. I'm not really sure theoretically the best way to do this, but I'll show you how I did it. I'm going to create a new material and put that on my mesh. This mesh is also a little bit rough. I'll put it inside a subdivision surface. I'm just holding down option when I click that, by the way, to quickly put this in place of the mesh and then put the mesh under it. And this is what I want to render back to After Effects. I'll save this. Here's my wand file, and I'll just drag that in, and I'll place it at the top of my scene. It looks beautiful. For the camera, let's select the Cinema 4D camera, and both of these were exactly the same. Whatever. Right now it's set to viewport, set it to current. The main reason I'm showing this is because those of you with Cinema 4D Lite won't have the option to render. Your performance is probably going to be a lot better if you just render this to an image sequence first. I'm going to pre-compose this, moving all attributes into the new comp, and adjusting the composition duration. And I'll render this whole comp so we can work a little faster. So I'll just go back into this comp and take my MP4, place it over the top, and solo it. And I'm going to hide this for just a moment. So this is the footage. I'm going to duplicate it and remove lockdown. Maybe for simplicity, I should just delete all these other layers. And I'm going to turn this layer on on top. And let's try screen for the blending mode. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm going to duplicate this wand layer and make a luminance mask. I'll go to effect, color correction, tint, and then curves. In this part, you kind of just go by eye. So I'm going to say that I think I want the skin to have mostly the full effect. So it'll be pretty bright there. And then the hair to have almost no effect. Because this might be the least profound and dumbest sounding thing I say. Bright things reflect more light. Dark things reflect less light. So when it comes to our digital light that we're adding on, it should respect that. And reflect proportionally to the surfaces we're already seeing in the scene. I'll take this lighting layer and set it as a luma mat. And there it is. So actually not too bad. If I want to give this some color, I'll go to effect, color correction, photo filter, set it to custom. And I guess I'll make it blue, whatever. And I feel like, because you're not blurring the luminance mask, this stays totally sharp. Instead, you're just blurring... You're just blurring this layer, which doesn't really need a ton of detail. You can go to Effect, Blur and Sharpen, Fast Box Blur. I'll turn my luminance map back on. And you can soften out that shadow by faking it with a fast blur. Maybe let's try add instead of screen so it'll be a little bit brighter. And here's the result. As for attaching something to the wand, check out the tutorials on the homepage, which will show you how to export points to the After Effects timeline. I think I'm gonna keep these tutorials as short as possible so I'm not repeating too much of the same information and save you some time.